Good evening and welcome to the Stafford Schools Culinary Virtual Information Night. We're so excited to have guests attending this virtual meeting. Um, we It is seven o'clock and so we are going to begin the presentation. And this presentation is currently being recorded. Please um, keep your cameras off and your microphones off during this uh, presentation. And if you have any questions, we ask you to put your email address and your questions with inside of the chat. We'll ask you again to keep your um, cameras off and your microphones off and to um, email any questions that you have, uh, excuse me, to email, put your email address inside the chat and to add any questions inside of the chat as well. We're so grateful to have joined in us this evening, two of our three chefs in um, our division, um, uh, Chef Cunningham and Chef Delacour, as well as other members of our Stafford Schools leadership. Thank you so much for coming and especially thank you to the parents and students um, that are pursuing the culinary program. Stafford Schools goals are aligned with our culinary program and our goals of making meaningful post-secondary outcomes for all students having high expectations of academic excellence for our students, creating safe and engaging and welcome environments for all with the support of all of our businesses, our parents, and our community at large. And most importantly, we wanna include our staff. So without further ado, we'll go through our process of our discussion and our agenda this evening. We're, gonna, uh, we're excited and congratulations to those students uh, that applied and accepted through our uh, lottery process. Um, we ask that you confirm before February 21st or sooner, and we'll go into some of the details of that during this presentation. We'll do an overview of the program and talk about the course sequence. We'll continue with some of the logistics with transportation and um, different requirements. And again, there'll be opportunities for you to put the questions inside of the chat. Um, if needed, we also have additional links for your um, for for your access for this particular presentation. Um, we'll go ahead and put this link inside the chat for you to be able to view it in the future. And we'll also be referencing the Stafford Schools program of study, which has also been put in the chat as well. Now, I'll transition over to Ms. Chestnut, who's going to talk more about the programming process. Hi, we wanted to give you a program overview. And um, you can also find this in the pro uh, program of studies with more um, information. But the Culinary Arts One course is worth two credits. And it's that, it, that is one class block meeting every day or two class blocks meeting on an X or a Y day. For Culinary Arts Two is two credits as well. And so is Culinary Arts Specialization. So we just want you to be aware of the hours and the requirement of the uh, course so that the student can be in attendance and not miss any information, it's very important. Also part of the culinary, uh, you will comply, the student will comply with the regulations of the Virginia Health Department and preparing and serving food sold to the public. There's also the opportunity for the Serve Safe Manager Certification Exam and the culinary arts program is offered at Brook Point High School, Mountain View, and Stafford High Schools. Uh, here's the culinary arts sequence with the course numbers. And again, there's more information in the program of studies. Um, the culinary courses teach basic skills and offer hands-on experience in culinary arts. They it prepare students for college and careers in the food service industry, and they work as a team in catering events. Again, they get to, an opportunity to earn the Serve Safe Manager Certification exam by the National Restaurant Association. And please reference the um, program of studies as we shared before, so you will have all this information. For the application, the first round notifications went out last week. The first selection deadline for those is February 21st. You will want to log into your School Mint account and view submitted applications, and then you'll want to accept one. Accepting an offer declines all other offers, including the waitlist offers. 
Any offers that you've received after February 6th or later will have a 16 day expiration date and that will be in your account. You will see that um, with each application when the offer expires. For transportation, any rising ninth or 10th grade student that accepts an offer to attend a specialty center or program pathway will be required to transfer to that offering school. Rising 11th and 12th graders may choose to travel to their program. Transportation is provided between home and school or between the schools. Additional information, students who transfer become full-time members of that school, including VHSL eligibility, which includes clubs, sports, and activities. Students who leave a center program will be required to return to their zoned high school. Students wishing to transfer into a different pathway at their center may make that request if space is available. And all the scheduling will be completed by the center's counseling team. So we ask for any questions that you have to put your email address and your question in the chat and we will have our chef instructors help answer them. Also, if you have any additional questions later after the program is finished, you may email academicprograms at staffforschools.net. And later on, we will be posting this uh, slide presentation on the website. So do we have any questions? We have our chef instructor from Mountain View and our chef instructor from Brook Point on the line. If you have any questions about the courses. Thank you for your question. We ask that you uh, put uh, type it in the chat via email. Excuse me, type it inside the chat um, with your email address. If you don't have capacity to type it inside the chat, we ask you to please email the email address on the screen at academics at staffordschools.net. Here's a question. Can you share what each year or class entails. Do you want to start? Or you want me to go? Go ahead, Justin. All right. So my class, uh, well, we, we all teach the same thing, but we do it in uh, uh, a little bit different order, maybe, or slightly different. But um, with me, I start out doing our Surf Safe certification. Uh, that's how most of the culinary schools all around the country do it. Uh, they get their certification, and then they go into the kitchen. Because uh, what's the point to go in the kitchen if you don't know how to properly uh, manage the food and the safety of the food that you're making? Uh, once we get done with that, then we start just doing uh, basic culinary training, uh, knife skills, uh, learning different types of equipment, uh, and we move on to uh, stocks, soups, sauces, and then vegetable starches, protein. It's just your basis in, um, uh, in, in learning culinary. Uh, then the second year for my culinary twos, we take everything we learned from the previous year and then we start doing our cafes. Uh, we do at least one cafe uh, a week. Uh, we also do uh, catering events for um, outside the school. We'll do it on weekends. Uh, the students are the ones who create the menus. They learn how to cost out the menus, write prep lists, shopping lists, and everything you need to do. Uh, like when I was a chef and I was working in a restaurant, I give them all the tools so they can create their menus and produce them. Uh, and then culinary three is specialization. They help out the culinary twos. I treat them as my sous chefs. Um, so when I don't have eyes on something, my culinary threes are the ones who are watching, make sure the culinary ones or twos are doing the proper knife skills. Um, and then they also do independent study. Uh, this year, I have them making a cookbook that we're gonna sell to the staff and the parents. 
And you said, uh, Justin, basically everything you said is what I do in my one, two, and three. Um, the catered events, though, you know, yes, they can be outside of school. They can be in the evenings. They can be on the weekends. But then the cafe is during the school time. So it's not, you know, like every evening and every weekend is not um, having to cater to events. So it's just when the community calls on us, that's when we take care of those things. So it could be during the school day, after school, evenings and weekends. So I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you, chefs. Um, as we see some additional questions inside the, the uh, chat, can you differentiate, uh, uh, chef talked a little bit about um, the uh, practical, but as far as some of the competencies that students will be doing, can you differentiate between culinary one, culinary two, and specialization? <laughs> well, culinary one, as Justin said, it's kind of like you're learning a lot of different hands-on um, ideas. And then culinary two and three, Justin talked about for the specialization, you can specialize in catering, you can specialize in um, baking and pastry. And then we also turn that into a, like a leadership role um, where they are, you know, like kind of a manager, maybe help planning and talking to the customer. But then level two um, is, is pretty much the same kind of competencies as level one, but more like um, mass production and a lot more hands on um, in, in producing. And those are the different competencies. Um, uh, Utopia asked about like how long the program is. Yeah. Uh, as you heard, there's like the three years and then each year is a two credit class. So if you start as a sophomore, you can ultimately end with the third year of culinary. So that's two credits, four credits, and then six credits total. Did that, Tracy, did I kind of explain that properly? Yes, that's perfect. And then after your second year, you become a completer and um, which for, for CTE, um, that is a, a benefit for your is that a, a seal on your diploma, Tracy? Is that correct? Uh, or yes, yes, and yes, you have that on your transcript. Yeah, okay. The next question identifies I'm a rising junior in CGS, and I would like to know if it's possible to do both. My CGS classes would be in the morning, or culinary classes in the afternoon. Um, for me, Justin, I think you're the same schedule as we are. Well. Yeah, like um, we have third block every day, but that's only for level one. And then after that, it's either X or Y, block one or two. So L, I'm not sure is because your CGS is that first block and or second, you know, because um, by level two and three, you're definitely going to be in the morning with us. Mm -hmm. So uh, L, my recommendation, our recommendation is to, um, we're going to take this question, but also defer to your counseling department at your school because it, it depends on uh, the way your courses fall and when culinary will, um, as the chef said, when it's available at your class and it's, and it's double blocked um, with also meeting your other uh, requirements for graduation. So that specific question, you, you, um, we would ask you to defer to your counselor. The next question, chefs, are, is there a cost for supplies for students? There isn't for my classroom. Uh, we provide uniforms, a uh, chef hat, apron, uh, chef coat, and pants. Uh, we do have shoes for students to wear as well that have been donated by previous students who have uh, completed the program. Uh, but a lot of students uh, buy their own shoes. It is not necessary, though. You just have to wear somebody else's. Um, that's the only thing I can really think of. Uh, or if I have a student that misses a lab, they can make it up at home, but they have to pay for their supplies. But if they can't afford the supplies or they don't want to cook at home, then they can also write a paper on it and get credit for that as well. But we always recommend people, it's best just to be in class and, and learn hands-on with the chefs. And exactly the way I run it at Brook Point, same thing as what Justin just said. Um, and then Amanda, I think the weekends and evenings required for students. Um, I, I don't have requirements, but when you're in there in level two and three, any opportunity that you can to help us 
um, is what we would love to have because um, we have events where we're serving a hundred plus uh, individuals and having more of our culinary students available to help is um, advantageous, but we understand that you can't always be there. Um, and I do offer volunteer hours. I, I, you guys like fill it out on the paperwork and I will give you those volunteer hours for anything outside of class. That's how I do it at Brook Point. And I always bribe my students with food. So if you work <laughs> on a weekend or, or on an evening, you're going to eat well. That, that too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We'll give a, another minute for questions, but we do thank everyone for attending. And like we said, the slideshow will be shared. And if you have any other email questions to email academic programs at staffordschools.net. And we thank Chef Delcourt and Chef Cunningham so much for being here and answering these questions. It means a lot. Okay, well, we thank you for attending and this concludes our presentation for this evening.